is no question that individual human beings are different, one from the other. Our eyes confirm this day in and day out. Skin color, body shape, hair form, eye shape. For several hundred years, we have used these visual differences to classify people into four or five groups we call races. We have a notion of race as being divisions among people that are deep, that are essential, that are somehow biological or even genetic, and that are unchanging, that these are clear-cut, distinct categories of people. And the beauty of the race business is that you can identify people by just looking at them. You don't even have to look at their genes because one manifestation of their genes is there, namely skin color or eye shape or hair shape. And then that's the key to everything. The idea of race assumes that simple external differences rooted in biology are linked to other, more complex internal differences, like athletic ability, musical aptitude, intelligence. This belief is based on the idea that race is biologically real. All of our genetics now is telling us that that's not the case. We can't find any genetic markers that are in everybody of a particular race and in nobody of some other race. We can't find any genetic markers that define race. And actually, what we're going to generate are billions of copies of a little section of your, of your genetic code. And we're going to look These at students are gathering for a DNA workshop led by Cold Spring Harbor Labs teacher Scott Bronson. Marcus, Gorgeous, Jackie, Noah, Hannah, Jamil, and their fellow students are about to explore the biology of human variation. But there's another type of DNA. Does anybody know what that type of DNA is? Yeah. Mitochondrial? Mitochondrial DNA. Very good. They will compare their skin colors. They're like not human colors. <laughs> they will type their blood. And they will swab cells from inside their mouths to extract a small portion of their own DNA. Once the sample is ready, they will compare some of their genetic similarities and differences. We're going to look at a very tiny section of this ring. The students begin the workshop with the same assumptions most of us have. As you begin to look at the data, you might want to keep in your mind who you think you might be most similar to and who you think you might be most different to. I think I probably have the most similarities with uh, Mr. Bronson or with Carol because we were white males, both Carol and I and both Scott Bronson and I. I think I'd have the most differences with Carol and the most similarities with Gorgeous. She's African-American, I'm African-American. I mean, like, black. I think maybe me and Natalia are most alike. She's Latin American and I'm Latin American. I figured that there would be tons of differences, especially with people who looked so different. To understand why the idea of race is a biological myth requires a major paradigm shift an absolute paradigm shift, a shift in perspective. And for me, it's like seeing, you know, what it must have been like to understand that the world isn't flat. And perhaps I can invite you to a mountaintop and you can look out the window and at the horizon and see, oh, what I thought was flat, I can see a curve in now, that the world is much more complicated. In fact, that race is not based on biology but race is rather an idea that we ascribe to biology.